Throughout my life, I've tried to have a deeper understanding. I, I went to graduate school a couple of times, and in the Air Force, I, I took my responsibilities very seriously. I was a constant learner, constantly striving for excellence. I wanted to understand not just the what and the how, but the why. I wanted to have a deeper understanding of the connectedness of life. I wanted to understand that bad outcomes are almost never the result of a single fault, a single failure, a single error. Instead, they are the end result of a causal chain of events. And understanding the, the why is critically important for at least two reasons. First, it helps to motivate us and others. Why we, must we do this? Why is it important? What happens if we don't? And second, it helps to chart a course in terra incognita, like this flight, a novel event that we'd never anticipated. We'd never specifically trained for this. In fact, in our flight simulators at the airline, it was not possible to practice a water landing. The data don't exist. They aren't programmed for it. The only training we'd ever gotten for a water landing was a theoretical classroom discussion. And yet, had you been able to watch us work on that flight? And, and I should tell you also that Jeff and I, our first officer, at like most flights at most large airlines where we fly with people we've never seen before. He and I had never met each other before Monday of that week. This happened on a Thursday afternoon. But if you've been able to, to sit in the observer seat in our cockpit on that flight to the river, not that you would really have wanted to be there with this, I, I, I grant you. And if you'd watched this work, you'd have been convinced that we worked together like that for years because we understood the why, not just the what and the how, because we had worked so hard to to be a good leader and a good follower and, and build a team. And that's one of the ways we, that we've made aviation safer throughout the last couple of decades, is by observing how the most effective captains lead and build teams, and how the crews who are the most effective communicate, how they trap errors, how they make decisions, how they create a shared sense of responsibility for the outcome and we taught everybody else to be as good. In fact, I was a, a pioneer at, at that at my airline. I helped to develop the first course that we taught about leadership and team building at my airline, and I taught the first course at my airline in beta form. So these concepts are things that I've been thinking about working on perfecting my entire life, becoming expert at my entire life. And so now I have proved in the most dramatic way possible that all the things that we taught work in the real world, even in the most exceptional crisis. I was a fighter pilot in the Air Force, so the, the, the pinnacle of tactical military aviation. Unless you're, you're someone who's done it, it's, it's hard to describe to you what it takes and what it likes, or what it's like. Suffice it to say that it's the most fun flying I've ever done and the most demanding flying I've ever done. When you're leading a formation of four jet fighters at 100 feet above the ground at 600 knots, you're covering a nautical mile every six seconds, you're traveling at 1,012 feet per second. Even in peacetime, in that environment, success and failure, life and death are separated by seconds and by feet. But it's after the flight in the debriefing where the learning really occurs, where we leaders and followers alike hold ourselves accountable to the highest professional standards and in brutally honest exchanges talk about what worked and what didn't and why. And all of aviation ultimately is like that. That's the beauty and the value of the National Transportation Safety Board investigation process where we find out what worked and what didn't and we make important recommendations going forward. Unfortunately, in this country, the NTSB can only make recommendations. It's up to the FAA to mandate that the airlines and the industry follow them and as typical, of most accidents on our flight, they required or they recommended that 35 improvements be made. Sadly, only six have been implemented in the seven years since our flight. You know, we can't afford to have learned costly lessons at great cost, literally bought with blood in many cases, and then file away those results on a shelf to be gathering dust. We owe it to those lives who have been lost and their families to learn from that and not repeat mistakes and have to relearn expensive lessons again. Throughout my flying career, even as we began to make aviation as ultra safe as it is now, I reminded myself to avoid complacency 
to remain vigilant because I never knew, even after 42 years of flying and 20,000 hours in the air, when or even if I might one day face some ultimate challenge. Or as I would tell you now, I never knew on which 208 seconds my entire career would be judged. So we built teams. We, we made it not only someone's right to speak up if they saw a concern, it was their responsibility to speak up. We made it about what was right and not who was right. We made it so that even the most junior flight attendant could approach the most senior captain about a safety concern and be heard. And that's what's made the difference, that and many other things.